Aloha, and welcome to Penny Yolo Traditions, Hawaiian Cowboys and Culture, a special exhibit at the National Ranching Heritage Center from May 19 to October 8, 2007. The island's largest and most famous cattle company, the Parker Ranch, celebrates its 160th anniversary in 2007. There are other outfits, but we have time to touch upon just a few of the people whose contributions made ranching in Hawaii possible. Hawaii is 2,400 miles from any continent, but 1,000 years ago the original Polynesian settlers took useful plants such as coconuts, bananas, and bamboo, as well as Asian chickens and pigs along on their outrigger canoes. They also brought their knowledge of making kapa cloth, a papery plant material. A 20th century example of traditional painted kappa is displayed in the exhibition. Spanish sailors had seen the Hawaiian Islands long before, but English explorer James Cook's 1778 discovery of what he called the Sandwich Islands is usually considered the first European incursion. Accurate maps were published and sailing ships from around the world regularly stopped at Hawaiian ports for water and supplies. The acquisitive British recognized Hawaii's value and made the islands a protectorate. The Union Jack is still part of Hawaii's state flag. English ship captain George Vancouver bought a number of cattle in Spanish California and a few cows reached Hawaii in fair condition early in 1793. They were a gift to King Kamehameha I who placed the animals under a protective royal taboo allowing the livestock to run free and multiply. Ten years later, more strange new beasts, horses, were brought to the islands from California. A young ship's clerk from Massachusetts saw Hawaii in 1809 and returned in 1815 after another trading voyage to the Orient. One of few white men allowed to stay, the ex-sailor was John Palmer Parker whose name was destined to become synonymous with ranching in the future Aloha state. The following summer he married a Hawaiian princess named Kipikane, a granddaughter of the king. Bullock hunting, as it was known back then, began by royal command when the growing herds of wild cattle had become a nuisance. What the Hawaiians needed were skilled cowboys to deal with the animals. In the early 1830s, Three experienced vaqueros came from California to teach the islanders to work cattle. They brought established Mexican ranching practices, horse equipment, and clothing, and even 175 years later, their legacy is recognizable. Besides gear and skills, the Hawaiian word paniolo comes from espanol, Spanish, which is what the Mexican cowboys called themselves and their language. The native Hawaiians soon learned to be excellent cowhands and are known as Paniolo today. The name includes an unspoken acknowledgement of the strength and honor such men have exhibited over many generations. In 1847, John Palmer Parker paid $10 for two acres of land at Mauna Kea, the Big Island's tallest dormant volcano. It was a small start to one of the biggest ranching dynasties in American history. But it's the point from which today's Parker Ranch counts its 160th anniversary. Additional property was added by Parker's descendants and top quality Angus and Charolais are now raised on approximately 150,000 acres. The Paniolo Traditions exhibit includes wonderful historic and modern photographs of ranches and lush scenery, information on the Hawaiian language and monarchy, cowboy attire, and a variety of products from the islands. Two Paniolo saddles that clearly show the Mexican influence are the stars of the show. This is curator Robin Gilliam Crawford and I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Mahalo for visiting.